Hey guys, welcome to ITS Tactical. Today we're going to be showing you how to make a lockpick practice set out of some simple materials and little time. Uh, what basically you have here are two deadbolts that are mounted onto a piece of wood here. Um, this is a basically a one and a half by nine. Um, I know there's a better way to describe it in lumber terms, but hey, those are the exact measurements. It's uh, one and a half inches deep by nine inches wide, and it's made up out of two pieces. And you can see, all we've done is just, you see the bottom side here, just put three holes and countersunk them so they're not sticking out the bottom, so the bottom's nice and flush. And we've just mounted a board here and a board here. These are both one foot pieces on the base as well as on the top. So. Basically, what we did is really just assembled two different doors. Um, if you look at the side, it's actually got the deadbolt latch that gets thrown. Um, it provides some visual feedback while you're picking, which is great. Um, a lot of the practice sets, like one of the ones you might have seen in our other video that's commercially available, doesn't have a visual feedback. Obviously, you get the, you know, the spin of the lock, but the visual feedback of actually throwing a deadbolt is just something I feel that's beneficial um, when you're picking and you're practicing. So we're going to be showing you how to make one of these. It's really not that hard to do. There are a few tools that you're going to need though and we'll go over those in a minute. But why two locks? Okay, before you ask that let me explain something to you. There are two ways to pick and basically what I'm trying to say is there's two ways to turn a lock. So if you notice, let me put these keys back in. I don't know why I took these out but so if you notice on these keys, to throw the deadbolt, this lock here on your left turns counterclockwise. This lock here on your right turns clockwise. So to release them or to undo the deadbolt, you're actually going to go the opposite direction. So this one is going to turn, it's hard to do this. Let me see if I can get around here and look at this while I'm explaining it. So, this lock is actually going to turn clockwise. So the tension that you apply when you're picking this lock on this side is going to be a tension that comes clockwise. It pushes down and this way, clockwise motion. So on the other side, you're going to have a tension that pushes the opposite direction. So you'll see as you unlock this, okay, so there's locked, there's unlocked. It actually turns in a counterclockwise pattern. So the tension you're going to be providing to this lock is actually going to be pushing down this way and this way, which is actually counterclockwise. So there are two different ways to provide tension on a lock, and that's why we set this up like this. So the tension is going to be coming this way in each side. And it's important to learn how to do both of these because you never know which kind of door you're encounter. you might encounter if you lock yourself out of your house or something like that. But the most common is obviously the left-hand thrown deadbolt like this. This is the one you're going to run into most commonly, and the tension is going to be turned clockwise. Um, I had someone email me the other day that asked the question, well, how do you know which way to turn a lock? Well... Most likely, the visual cue for this is going to be which way does the door open. If the hinges are on the left side of the door, it's most likely going to be this arrangement here. Hinges on the right side of the door, it's going to be this arrangement here. So it really just depends on, obviously you look for the where the hinges are on the door, you look for where the lock is on the door, and those are going to be your big visual cues to which way you need to turn. Um, obviously, just looking at a lock doesn't really tell you much because I can take tension on this lock either coming clockwise or counterclockwise and it doesn't budge either way. Um, these aren't very expensive locks, um, deadbolts, but they are mortise locks, which we'll explain in a minute. And what those enable you to do is actually change out the pins and you can actually add and sub well, you can't add, but you can subtract pins. These are This is a five pin uh, tumbler set, so you can actually remove pins so it makes picking this uh, deadbolt easier so you can practice with less than five pins like it comes with standard. 
So let's get into actually how to make one of these. I'll, I'll go over some more how-to stuff. Uh, maybe we'll, I'm actually probably going to plan on doing a whole video just on the how-to of this, but this video is more a demonstration of how to put one of these things together. So let's get into that. Okay, the first thing you're going to need to make this lockpick practice set is two pieces of wood, just like I described before. Now, if you remember what I said earlier, you're going to need two one and a half by nine inch wide pieces of wood, just like this. Now, like I said, all I did was just went in through the bottom of the wood. Um, I marked off uh, where I wanted this piece to sit. I, uh, I drew some lines so I knew exactly the area I'd be dealing with. And then I drilled holes. I drilled three holes all the way through. Um, that was just with a, a pilot drill bit, which I'm probably, I'm probably lost here. I had it up here earlier. So you just need a small drill bit. And the screws that I used are two and a half inch long um, exterior screws. So the drill bit I used is probably a you know one and a half inch drill bit, but it's enough if you have it right to get all the way through the wood. And you need to get all the way through, so that way you can come back on the other side on the bottom and drill and countersink those holes. If you don't know what a countersink is, you need one. You should start using one when you're doing stuff with wood. Um, it really makes it nicer because the screws like this will fit flush and you won't have any screws sticking up and you won't be splitting your wood to screw them down enough to, to countersink them yourself. So, got the wood out of the way. You know you need two pieces of wood. Um, again, those are 12 inches long. Each piece is 12 inches long. Um, the screws, you're going to need quite a few of those. Uh, actually, you just need three. I was thinking of something else. So you're going to need three of those and then Obviously, you're going to need two deadbolt sets, and these are just some cheapo quick set uh, deadbolt kits that I bought at Home Depot. I think they were about $12, $13 a piece. Uh, they're perfect for this. There are some cheaper, but you got to be careful about the cheapo stuff because if you, this is a mortise cylinder, and this is the interior of what you're going to be working with, and some of the cheaper um, sets, some deadbolt sets, will not have this removable plate right here so you can pull out some of those pins. And we'll probably be going into that into another video because it's going to take a while to get through the instructions for this, so I'll probably follow this up with another video. But at any rate, you can remove pins to make uh, picking this these uh, mortise cylinders a lot easier. So that's what you want to look for. You want to look for these mortise cylinder sets. Um, very easy to put together, as we'll show. So need two of those. Um, so you can do a right and a left, just like I showed you on this stand here. Um, you're going to need a chisel for hollowing out the area on the side, right here, where the actual deadbolt itself fits into. You're going to need to recess that a little bit with the chisel. It's not that hard to do, but it does take a little bit of work. Um, you're going to need a one inch wood boring bit, and that's to cut the hole in the side that the deadbolt goes into. This, it requires a one inch hole. And as you start reading in the directions that come with the, dead, the deadbolt kits, you're gonna know how to do this. It gives you exact measurements, it tells you what to do, what you're gonna need, things like that. You're gonna need a pencil, obviously, to mark everything off. Um, this is a very handy bit. Um, I've had this for probably 10 years, but um, there, it's actually a, a boring bit to actually drill holes through um, wood like this to put in the door. So I actually had to drill from both sides. So what I'd recommend is taking um, a larger drill bit. Um, I think this is a 3 16ths, yep. And it's the same size bit that's in the center of this thing. And I actually drilled a pilot hole all the way through this thing so there was a hole on the opposite side. So what I did is I drilled halfway through on this side and halfway through on the other side to knock this hole out. And if you look, it's pretty chunky. And the bit that I have didn't fit it all the way. And you might be able to get a longer one. Um, this is just a smaller one. I just kind of worked with what I had. So at any rate, great thing to have. It really makes life a lot easier when you're doing this thing. So this is your one inch hole on the side here. And it comes through to the center where your larger two inch diameter hole is that this larger bit cuts. Um, you might need a file for sharpening your chisel. You need a hammer for tapping the chisel. Um, I talked about the countersink and drill bits and screws. Um, you might need a uh, 
a, uh, some kind of right angle. This is a speed square. So let's get into actually how to assemble this thing. Um, again, the boards aren't that complicated. It's really just three screws on the bottom. It's not that hard to do. Everyone should be able to, uh, to manage drilling three holes here. And I painted this black, slapped some ITS stickers on there, and there you go. So, this is our two-inch hole. So all we're going to do is just follow the instructions that are in the manual here, and we're going to mount this thing. So we're just going to insert the deadbolt here on the side. And if you look in there, you can see the way it fits together. Now this, I'll explain this thing here. There's a, there's a certain way that this goes together and uh, lets it twist like that to lock the deadbolt from the rear. So all we're going to do is make sure that that's lined up the right way. It's really kind of foolproof. You can't really mess this part up. Um, it's got a, a unique pattern on the back to where it's going to line up correctly for you. Um, it won't give you too much grief. Get this on here. Okay. So now that we've got that lined up, everything is through. And you can see the back here. You can test it as it's just kind of through like this, throwing the deadbolt. And then all you're going to do is put these long screws that it comes with right through the back here. Hopefully most of you have had some kind of experience putting together um, doorknobs and things like that. So you'll at least know a little bit of what's going on here. But like I said, it's really not that hard to do. Um, just takes a few minutes of time. Cutting your wood is probably the longest part. This is this is very simple. And again, like I said, the the directions tell you everything you need to do. Um, the important thing to remember is how far in from the ends here that you need to measure. And I believe these locks specify two and three eighths of an inch. And that is the distance I measured from the outside to the inside. So I just drew a straight edge. I think it was three inches down from the top is what I did. Um, and I'll write all that up in the article too. But so three inches down from the top, two and three eighths inches in from the sides. Drilled the large two inch holes um, at that same diagonal line, um, horizontal line. I drilled two one inch holes in the sides of the board. Um, just it, even with the middle here for the insertion of these deadbolts and chiseled out the area here. So all I did was I traced the area around this little mechanism here and just chiseled it out. It really wasn't that big of a deal. Um, you do have to be careful not to go crazy with the chisel and chisel away too much wood. But again, all you're going to do is tighten this thing up. like so. Make sure your deadbolt works. Now you're going to put in the screws on the side here and I drilled pilot holes for these as well. And then just spray painted it. Obviously I painted it without the locks on here. But I'm really pretty happy with the way this came out. Um, I've been using a uh, practice set we've had here for a while, and uh, it was just a commercially available one, and I've been wanting to do this for a long time. thought I'd share it with you guys on, on how to make one of these. I think that's, it's a great thing to, to have to practice with. It gets you uh, spinning both ways, clockwise and counterclockwise. Um, the tension is just a little bit different on each way, so that's why you really should practice both ways um, with something like this. So, there you have it. It's not something that's very complicated to put together, like I said. Um, really recommend putting something together like this. Very cheap and inexpensive. I think the whole thing, uh, wood, obviously I had the tools, but the wood and the locks themselves, I think everything came out to about 32 bucks. So, wasn't bad at all. Um, again, we'll follow up this video with a little bit on uh, more on the mortise cylinders and how to rekey those, take out pins, things like that as well as some uh, get into some technique videos with uh, the locks like this. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, really quick, one thing I forgot to mention is that what you can do after you're done creating one of these is to get some of this 
Um, Non-skid stuff, this is like the stuff that you can line drawers with or toolboxes. Um, I know that I got some of this stuff whenever I was putting drawer liners into my, my toolbox. But this makes a great pad, like a non-slip pad that you can put down and set your lockpick stand on top of and pick with. It's, it helps it not to move, helps it not to shift while you're, you're picking, and it's great to keep it from scooting on the table. Um, I wanted to, uh, to show you that before I glued it on the bottom. I'm just going to take some spray glue and I'm going to slap this on the bottom so this is always on there. So there you go. Let us know if you have any questions. Hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.